Hello everyone. Today we will start our third chapter from section one, and the heading of the chapter is combining first and second law of thermodynamics. So we have seen the first law and second law in detail. The first law is of a law of conservation of energy, and the second law of the thermodynamics, which gives the conditions of spontaneity. with the introduction of a new function entropy and the criterion is delta s is greater than 0 for a spontaneous process which is applicable for the isolated system then in order to decide about the feasibility of a process we must know the entropy changes of a system as well as that of the surrounding and after that we have learnt gibbs function and the helmholtz function so in today's lecture we will start with the points which are included in chapter number 3 so these are the points which are included so first point is properties of gibbs free energy the temperature dependence of gibbs energy the pressure dependence of gibbs free energy then chemical properties of a perfect gas and last point is the open system and changes of composition so these are the four five topics which are included in chapter number 3 so we will see first the properties of gibbs free energy then this second topic we have already covered in one video as the heading of the video is the gibbs helmholtz equation the temperature dependence of gibbs free energy is given by gibbs helmholtz equation so refer this video for this point number 2 and in today's lecture we will see point number 1 and point number 3 so we will start with first point the properties of gibbs energy so we have defined the gibbs free energy g is equal to h minus ts that means gibbs free energy is dependent upon the enthalpy thermodynamic temperature and the entropy of the system so the free energy change for any process is a state function which depends upon the initial and the final states so see here i have written equation change in gibbs free energy is equal to delta h minus t delta s here in this equation delta g delta h and delta s all three are the state functions that means this all three properties are dependent on the initial and the final state hence our gibbs free energy is also a state function which depends on the initial and final states as it is g1 and g2 then it is a definite quantity at any given temperature and pressure and this delta g varies as the temperature and pressure will vary then the absolute values of the free energies of the substance are not known in processes only the differences are determined that is a delta g delta h and t delta s here delta is the change or the difference because we don't know the absolute values of the free energies of the substance then next property is free energy change of the reaction can be expressed in equation which is similar to the thermochemical equations and this equations can be added or subtracted as the algebraic equations nextly from this equation we can get the criteria of a spontaneity and non spontaneity so we will see this the sign of the free energy is of a great importance when the driving tendency of a reaction is from left to right energy is always lost by the system 
and the reaction can take place spontaneously. So, delta G is equal to negative symbol or the negative sign at that time the reaction will be spontaneous. And in other words, spontaneous reactions occurs with the decrease in free energy. Then, when the reaction is non-spontaneous, the system will absorb energy. That means Gibbs free energy will increase and the sign of the Gibbs free energy will be positive. That is, delta G is positive. At that time, the reaction will non-spontaneous. And the reaction in which the tendency is to proceed in the forward and the backward directions are at equal is said to be reaction is in a equilibrium state or the condition and delta G for this system under this condition will be zero. That means when the forward reaction is equal to the backward reaction, the gas free energy change will be zero at an equilibrium condition. Therefore, the resultant free energy change of an equilibrium state is equal to zero. So, these are the properties of Gibbs free energy. As we have seen, it is a state function which depends on initial and final state. Then it depends on the temperature and the pressures. Then we don't know the absolute value. Therefore, we can take differences that is a change that is a delta then we have seen the sign of the delta g is very important when it is negative the reaction will be spontaneous when delta g is positive the reaction is non-spontaneous and when delta g is equal to zero there is a equilibrium condition so all these are the properties of gibbs free energies Now, we will see the next point, the pressure dependence of the Gibbs free energy. So, as I have said, the Gibbs free energy is dependent on the two variables, the temperature and the pressure. So, first variable is pressure, we will see. So, the absolute values of the Gibbs free energies cannot be calculated. So, we can take the differences. However, the variation of free energy with pressure at a constant temperature can be calculated. So, we don't know exact values or the absolute values of the free energy, so we can take the differences. That is G2 minus G1 or the final value minus initial value that is called as a delta G. And here, we will take a pressure is variable and temperature will be constant. So, we will calculate the delta G. Now, see I have written here equation del G divided by del P at a constant temperature is equal to volume. So, this is our starting equation. Change in Gibbs free energy with respect to change in pressure at constant temperature is equal to volume V. So, we can write this equation as dg is equal to vdp just transfer this del p to the right side so dg is equal to vdp here if the pressure changes from p1 to p2 because again pressure is a state function and the corresponding free energies are g1 and g2 respectively so this equation first can be integrated as or this equation 2 Simply we have written equation 1 as equation 2. So, just take equation 2. So, equation 2 can be integrated as just put limits. The Gibbs free energy changes from G1 to G2 and pressure changes from P1 to P2. So, just I have written the equation 2 in terms of an integrated form. Then, this dg is written as delta g and delta g is equal to higher limit minus lower limit that is g2 minus g1 is equal to integration of vdp and integration limits are v1 to, uh, p1 to p2 
So, this is our equation number 3. Now, to solve the equation number 3, volume must be expressed as a function of pressure. So, we know the Boyle's law. PV is equal to nRT. Here, P is the pressure, V is volume, N is the number of moles of an ideal gas. R is a molar gas constant and T is the temperature. So, to solve this equation number 3, we require this volume in terms of pressure. So, just we want to find out value of V. PV is equal to nRT. Just transfer this P to the right side. And equation will be V is equal to nRT upon P. So, just put this equation in equation number 3 here. So, I have written here equation delta G is equal to integration goes from P1 to P2 nRT divided by P into dP. So, just take constant term nRT outside of integration and in integration dP by P and integration goes from P1 to P2. So, the integration of this term will come ln of P2 upon P1. So, this is the equation number 4. Delta G is equal to nRT as it is and ln of P2 upon P1. Now, this equation can be written as, instead of this ln, we can write 2.303 log. So, just equation can be written as, delta G is equal to 2.303 nRT log of P2 upon P1. So, this is our equation number 5. Again, According to Boyle's law, P1 V1 is equal to P2 V2. Therefore, just shift this V2 to the left side and P1 to the right side. Equation will be as P2 upon P1 is equal to V1 upon V2. And delta G can be written as delta G is equal to 2.303 nRT into log of V1 upon V2. So, just put P2 upon P1 value in this equation number 5 and value is V1 upon V2. So, equation 5 can be written as delta G is equal to 2.303 nRT into log of V1 upon V2. Then, this equation for solids and liquids, their volume may be considered as a constant over a wide range of the pressure. For solids and liquids, the volume will be considered as a constant when there is a variable pressure. Therefore, the equation 2, this equation, dg is equal to VDP. Therefore, equation 2 on integration gives directly, don't put value of V here for solids and liquids. So, delta G is equal to VDP and just put limits, pressure changes from P1 to P2. Therefore, just take constant term, volume is constant, so take it outside of the integration. V into integration of dP and just put limits. So, this dP will return as P2 minus P1. So, change in Gibbs free energy is equal to V dP or V in bracket P2 minus P1. So, this equation can be used to calculate Gibbs free energy change of a solid and liquid substances. So, all this is about the pressure dependence of the Gibbs free energy. Now, in short, we will see the temperature dependence of Gibbs free energy. So, this we have explained in lecture 27 and in previous video whose heading is gibbs helmholtz equation. So, this temperature dependence of Gibbs energy can be explained by using gibbs helmholtz equation and the equation is delta G is equal to delta H plus T in a bracket del delta G divided by del T at a constant pressure and here del delta G divided by del T is the temperature coefficient and this equation shows the temperature dependence of a Gibbs free energy. So, for this point in detail you can refer 
the previous video whose heading is this Gibbs-Helmholtz equation.